Um, th this is a this is a model that uses a theory that I I believe in. That when you're at that well, there's it's it's like everything. It's it's a lot more complicated the story than than just a couple of seconds can explain. But what I'm discovered is that a, a lot of people uh, there was a mix of Power BI and the idea that if you brought data into Power Pivot, you would um, you would bring everything into Power Pivot, and then you'd analyze it in Excel, right? So the Power Pivot, because it's effectively an OLAP tool in its own right, would uh, put together your queues for you based on uh, transactional data, line OLTP data, right? So you bring everything in. Well, I realized very early on that I wanted to find a way to, to do this in Excel, because if you're going to bring in OLTP data, you pretty much have to move your data source to SharePoint or to a Power BI because you can't bring in millions of records into an Excel spreadsheet. For one thing, the refresh would just be painful, right? Do you guys agree with that? Yes. Uh, yes. And that's the problem. And the other thing is with those things is they have a refresh that you can set in, but First of all, once you start moving up to, to a web-based solution, suddenly uh, IT is going to take a notice of this. What are you doing up there, right? Okay. And so I like to fly under the radar, right? Second of all, so many solutions don't need that much data, but you only want to see certain – I'm not explaining myself because I'm trying to explain it quickly, but here's the deal. This is a production report. So if I go here – let me get rid of this. If I go here, this is 2014's production at these fictitious mines, which are a bunch of mines in Australia with a bunch of numbers that are fictitious. I can say, what happened on this day? What happened on that day? What happened on this day? And all of this is in Power Pivot. These are tables. Oh, mine's protected. Okay. They're tables in Power Pivot that are contain the data. And then there's the various and sundry DAX formulas underneath it that are pulling my data back down and being used as the sources for these pivot tables for this sexy production chart, right? Where I can say, give me everything in February by, by mine. Uh, give me everything in this mine for the whole year. Uh, give me only uh, surface mines. And this is all being driven by power pivot tables. But the interesting question is, if I'm a user and I come into this report, remember how I said I like reports that last forever? This goes back to 2008, and there's data. So this is pulling data from a database I wrote in 2008, and it's all been changed to protect the, the, the innocent or the guilty. But if I want to look at only 2015 so far, watch what happens when I click that button. Now there's an hourglass, and at the bottom, you can't uh, see, you can see it uh, flashing at the bottom. What it's doing is it's doing a real-time re-query where it's pulling in all those tables, but only for data where the date of the, of the, of the truck, in this case, was in 2015. And so it's refreshing this data with only the data that there. And it took 30 seconds, but it's, there's a lot going on here, right? And so what's happened is I've got two, two things happening. One is I have uh, data queries that are Excel connections. And so I, for example, have a truck summary, summary here. And what I do in this, I'm calling SQL Server, and I'm saying select star from function truck summary where the dates are between 01, uh, 2015 and 12, 31, 2015. So what I've done is when I change this, I actually change the variable behind that. And let me show you how that's done. Now, I don't know how much of time you guys have, but I think this is pretty valuable stuff. I have a list of the connections here, and these are the calls that I make. And so programmatically in Excel, in VBA, I redefine the connection strings in Excel. Uh -oh of the connection strings, only in Excel. I can't do it in Power Pivot, not only because I can't do it in VBA, for one, and second of all, if I change something in Power Pivot, it's going to make that so I can't change the, anything in Excel. So I right. only change it in Excel, 
and when I do that, I run through these in code. And my code is actually fairly simple. It's, it's called Refresh Connects. And I actually run through this process here, which says, go through each connection, and it's the connections in that list you saw. Change the command text, which means if it's moved to another server, I can, I can change that, by the way. And change my connection provider. Sorry, that's the command, that's the, the location. And this is my string, which would include a reference to 14 or 15 or 10 or 12 or whatever year I want. And then once it's done that, it refreshes all of them, which automatically refreshes PowerPivot and automatically refreshes all my charts. Sorry, I clicked the wrong button. Let's go back here, right? Now, this is huge because this file is very small, but it's querying a one million record database. It's a one million record table is the core of this. And there's two things I'm doing. One is I'm saying select where this date is the range, but the other thing is I'm calling a function in SQL, which means I'm calling a function which pre-aggregates my data. So I'm not bringing in uh, OLTP data, I'm bringing in aggregated data based on the lowest common denominator, common denominator, right? Therefore, I can create, because this is an analytics, I don't care about individual records, except that I guess I care by day. That's it. That's my lowest common denominator. In this case, I can have 100 trucks a day. I don't care about trucks. I care how many trucks were in that day. And so I've taken a million records, and by filtering the time frame, which is only the time frame I care about, and by pre-aggregating, I've reduced the main table to like a couple of thousand records. All right? Cool. All right? Now, that's, that is the thing that I have, have been promoting for like four years, and, and a whole bunch of people get it. But I know I'm swimming upstream against the, 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 the powers that be in Power Pivot. you right? They don't believe in this. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, it's a sacrilege, okay? Okay, so I'm still a believer in this, and now the Power BI has moved away from Excel, in effect. I think there's a possibility for this. Oh, man, yeah. And the fact that, and the fact that Office 20, Excel 2016 now is going to be around forever, and it will use all this, then I can build a solution here that you could use for 10, 20 years. Yes. Because Excel isn't going to change anymore. It's not. Plus, Windows is going to allow you to keep using it for a long time. Now, here's a, one last thing I want to show you, one trick. Everything I'm showing you here is actually happening on the Mac. I'm using a Mac. You're looking at a Mac screen. Yeah. Do you hear what I'm saying? Yes. Because I'm using a product called Remote Apps, which is... A version is a is a version of RDP that's shipped by um, by uh, by Microsoft, and it allows you to, in effect, use a Citrix kind of scenario or a terminal server where they just provide it for you, and you can sign up and you get the full Office suite. Plus, you can customize your solutions, and you can. I'm actually running version uh, Access 2013 in a window on my Mac, full-featured Windows version. And I can also run it on my phone. I can also run it on my iPad. I can run it on, 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 uh, on um, uh, my Windows phone. I can run it on my Android tablet because it's a four, look at this. Here's an, this is an, an, an access application running on my Mac, running in the cloud. And it's is it is it any slower? Like if you're doing no. VPN, or is it no. just, just as? Oh. No, because um, because uh, no, because it's just a screen scraping tool. That's the thing is you're using servers. A v, the, what slows a VPN down is if you're if you're connecting to your data, but you're still running a local piece of software. It has to suck all the data back to the local machine to do its thing, right? In this case, mm -hmm. this is actually running on a server. This is all this is is running on a server. Very so cool. the v, so the VBA and everything you could use on the phone because of the way that it's set up. Absolutely, and I'm using the Mac. And in fact, what's cool about it? I mean, you, I have an iPhone four, so if, if I showed it to you, you can't even read it. But if you have like an iPhone six, you can basically, or an iPad. I've run it on my grand kid's iPad. You can actually use it exactly the way it is. You don't have to really build a new paradigm, a new interface. If you're if you've got a 
a, a screen that's big enough. And if you want, you could build a custom interface that actually targets a phone. I could, for example, have it come up and say, which device are you using, a phone, a tablet, or a PC or a Mac? And if you, whichever one you choose, you could give them their own, uh, their own front end. And this is, cool. this is native access. But what's the other thing about it, one last thing I'm going to show you, and as I know, I don't know how much, okay, it's still there. Let me try it again here. There's another sort of odd aspect. I know this is an Excel show. Okay, I'm going to show you in Excel. It's the same thing. Uh, there's something kind of interesting about this when you come down to it, which will be my, my last uh, demo here. These connections here are actually connections to a SQL Azure database. So these, these tables are actually connected to a SQL Azure server. A SQL Azure server. Mm -hmm. Which means my application is running in the cloud in, on a Microsoft server in remote desktop and it's reaching out to a SQL Azure database and it's running my Excel solution, which, or it's running my Access solution, full featured on any device I want to run it on. And I'm going, cool. what's wrong with this picture? Why, why would you, uh, why would this not be common? Why would people yeah. not do this all the time, right? Now, the, the remote apps people are part of the Azure group at Microsoft, and they are capable. And they seem to get this. And they say, hey, you know, this is, this is cool technology. We'd like to help people encourage it. So they're interested in people like us doing solutions like this. Say, say you had a solution. You could actually take a, 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 a company that's distributed. Say there's a – how many times have you had a company, one of your small companies that has multiple offices, right? This way you could have one uh, in-the-cloud solution and everybody could go to it and use it in the cloud, right? Yeah. Or they could use it – to do inventory out in the um, in the warehouse on their iPad, and it would feed directly into the SQL Azure database, which would be used at corporate. Ha I mean, it's a, it's a miracle, and it's cheap. It's like ten to fifteen dollars a month per user, and you use your Office 365 uh, license. You can use one of your licenses because you get five, I think. And you can assign it, and there you go. So the, it's cost effective, and and it works. So I don't know what to say. So anyway, is that uh, enough of a tip? Yes, yeah, so there, there, it's it's not that common where I I I'm writing down the whole time the person's giving the tip because I'm thinking, okay, well I'm gonna have to rewatch this video four or five times just to to get all the links and everything. So uh, Oz, well, go to my blog. This is we'll, detailed in my blog. We'll do that. We'll have a, a lot of links underneath here as well. On Man, where you just, just, what do you think there, Oz? No question. This is five. This is five. Um, <laughs> Make it a blink. Because it's just out like out of what? Out of what? Five out of what? Out of five. five. Oh, jeez, thanks. Jeez. Cause, cause I, you know, cause you, you get me thinking again about uh, all the the capability that's out there. Um, you know, uh, embedding stuff on the web and everything, and you show me a different way that may not necessitate learning JavaScript. No, you can take existing solutions and move them up, you, you know, boom. Yeah. Wow. Well, that, wow. You see, the, that, the, that's some good stuff. Th this means that Excel and Access can have a life. Now, let's look at this. They've announced Windows 10 is, quote, the last version of Windows, which whoever said that at Microsoft should have been taken out in the back and shot, right, uh -oh. because it's really not true, right? It's, it's not the last version. They're just shifting to a different model. But the fact is that Windows, if something runs in Windows 10, I think you can expect it to run for another 20 years if necessary, right? Mm -hmm. And I think Office is not going to change either. Excel is not going to evolve much from now on either for the similar reason. Therefore, if you can get your application to run in Windows 10 in Excel 2016 or, th or 13, you should be able to build a solution now that will run for 10 or 20 years. And the fact is that companies want that. They don't. There is a theory that everybody wants to change things all the time, and that's why you use Excel. True, to some extent. But there's an awful lot of business processes that never change. Right. I, like I said, I have solutions that have been used for 25 years. 
And that's a big market that used to be a big market that's faded, and, and I'd like to see it come back. Not just for personal reasons, but it would help. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, sorry guys. I guess you asked me here no to problem. sermonize. Hmm? Well, yeah. Oh, well, well, hey, did, so preach, did. brother, preach. Well, yeah. Yeah. You see, I used to be I used to be a preacher for this technology for the first 10, 15 years. Uh -huh. That was my big thing. And I've spoken all over the world about this technology. I've, yeah. I've actually been to, to Holland seven times in the last seven years to speak about this technology at a conference, separate from my other work in Holland, right? I've spoken in Australia. I've spoken in, all, in England, right? And yet in the last few years, I've had trouble getting enthusiastic, right? And now I'm getting enthusiastic again. Yeah. Yeah, I like this. I like this. Um, wow. Wow. Yeah, well, I tell you, you know, when you, you talk about Microsoft and everything and the direction they're going, yeah, my concern is so much around enterprise and big data, enterprise and big data. <laughs> yeah, right. And and it's like the popular thing to talk about. So Microsoft isn't the only one to blame, but I just feel like, you know, I'm going to teach a um, a workshop Friday at a nonprofit conference, and they're not big they data. They don't have big data? No, but they've got data problems. Exactly. You don't have to have a lot of data to to have it be a problem. Right. Yeah. So right. if you if you forget to apply for this twenty thousand dollar grant, well, there you go. I know. And the thing is that that this is I call it not so big data. Mm -hmm. Right. And yeah. to me, the combination of of uh, SQL Server with all its capabilities, Excel, and Power Pivot and Power Query and all their capabilities. Which once you wrap that all together, that's a pretty serious piece of software. You know that. I mean, it's not for the faint of heart to, to build solutions in that. My argument is there should be a more professional class of people doing Excel development, but Microsoft has dropped the ball on that. We used to have an office developers council I was on for years. They dropped that, and now they have a council of CFOs and CIOs. So they don't care about us, right? But the actual fact is we've got to somehow build this up ourselves. And one thing we can't do is start fighting each other, too. That's another thing. There's certain people in the Excel community who have declared themselves gods. Well, that's got to stop, right? Because the old, well, we either hang together or we all hang separately, right? I mean, that's, that's what we're talking about. And it's not just for our purposes. The clients are missing out. 